Tonight, tonight in our Christmas story, we, you, if you've noticed, we've been bouncing around a little bit, uh, not in a linear fashion by any means. And tonight we go back to when Mary was pregnant with Jesus. In fact, when not only was Mary pregnant with Christ, uh, but when also her, her aunt Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist. Uh, the stanza of verses that I had uh, Richard read I don't know if you're aware of it, but uh, ha has its own title. It's called The Magnificat. The Magnificat. I'll never forget the very first time I heard somebody say that. I thought, well, that's a great name for a punk band, you know, The Magnificats. And, uh, but no, this, this is The Magnificat, and it's a fascinating hymn, if you will. It's a psalm technically made up of psalms. Well, we're going to back up just a little bit before we get into that stanza of verses. If you go back with me to Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 39. Luke chapter 1, and verse 39, by way of context in our Christmas story. Again, we have, I have not been preaching the Christmas story in a linear fashion. I'm prone to do that because I don't know why the devil gets to pick his battleground all the time. You know, December 25th is not Jesus' birthday. Did you know that? We choose to celebrate Jesus' birthday at that time. And uh, we could, i tell you what, any day is a good day to choose Jesus, uh, to celebrate Jesus' birthday. If there's one birthday you should celebrate, it is his. Amen? Amen. Uh, but I just feel like the Christmas story is poignant all year long. And at any facet, we could jump in and God can speak. But we're back here uh, in Luke chapter 1 and verse 39, seeing Mary pregnant with child. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste and into a city of Judah. And entered the house of Zacchae uh, Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. This is her, her aunt. And it came to pass that uh, when Elizabeth heard uh, the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. She was pregnant with John the Baptist. This is Jesus' cousin. Uh, the, 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 uh, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, that's an interesting th thing right there. Uh, you know, my daughter, again, just giving birth, it, it's uh, a fascinating thing, gentlemen, to be around a woman who's pregnant. Amen. It's fascinating and terrifying at the same time. Uh, women, uh, the moment they become pregnant, are moms. Uh, we don't become dads till maybe six months to a year afterwards. Then, then all of a sudden, we kind of catch up to the moms. But here are these two mothers who have children in their wombs. And one leaps for joy, and Elizabeth, it is said, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. As she's filled with the Holy Spirit, she begins to speak. And she spake out, verse 42, with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence, and, and why, she says, and whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me. Now she recognized that Mary was the mother of the comfort of Israel. She recognized that Mary was going to give birth to the consolation of Israel. But she didn't revere Mary. Notice that. But instead she recognized this. She said it in a loud voice, filled with the Holy Spirit. If there was ever a time to give reverence to Mary, I think that would have been a good time. Amen? Amen. But no, she didn't do that. But instead the baby jumped, leaped for joy out of the recognition that he was in the presence of of the Christ child. You know, 
that baby leaped for joy in that womb upon the presence or the incoming presence of, of Christ's first advent. We leap for joy hearing about Jesus coming back. Amen? I tell you, when people start talking about Jesus calling us home, I, I get real excited. I get really, really excited. Uh, we, we're, not, we, we're not necessarily told to be watching so much as we're listening. Listen for him to call us up. To call us up. Get up here, like he tells John in the book of Revelation. Come up here. I have some things I ought to show you. No, I tell you, my friends, the second coming is going to be a glorious thing. It's going to be glorious. We ought to leap for joy even thinking about it. Again, in verse 42, she spake out with a loud voice and said unto her, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Why hast thou come to me, uh, the mother of my Lord? Should, why should the mother of my Lord come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told of her from the Lord. You know, that's a wonderful thing that Elizabeth does for this young lady. She says, you're blessed among women, Mary. This is a wonderful thing. But then she basically says, now listen, what God said is going to happen, he's going to perform it, Mary. This is going to happen. Don't worry. Don't fret. What God says, he performs. Turn with me, if you will, real quick. This is the only scripture in the New Testament we're going to turn to tonight, and then I hope you have your Bible all greased up, because we have a ton of stuff to get to in the Old Testament. Turn with me, if you will, to, uh, I think it's Philippians 1.6. Philippians 1.6. Paul writes to Philippians, he says, being confident of this very thing, that he, that he which begun, hath begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. How, how often do we comfort one another with these words? I'm going to start a series here I think Judy and I figured it out. It's going to be January 10th. It's going to be a quick course in overcoming. A quick course in overcoming. We're going to tag team it with the, uh, the youth group up there. We're going to try and have them teach about the seven churches in Revelation. They're going to teach how Christ comes and admonishes them and even rebukes them. And then they're going to leave from up there on Wednesday nights and after our singing, they're going to come in here, and I'm going to explain to them what Christ has in store for the overcomer. And I'm going to remind them, and I want to remind you and you on the Internet and the radio, that we are more than overcomers. We are more than, what does it mean to be more than an overcomer? We are rulers. To be more than an overcomer means that we rule and we reign with Christ from the heavenlies. Again, I said, we've been given a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let your fears be given to the Lord and then walk boldly out there and do the will of the Lord. Why? Well, I read it again because you can be confident of this very thing that God, which began a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He doesn't stop. He's never going to stop. I think there's a song that goes like that. I think it goes on like that for 20 minutes. He's never, never going to stop. He's never, never going to stop. But that's a whole other story. But he's not going to stop. All right, turn back with me to Luke. Yes, Elizabeth tells, Elizabeth tells Mary something so wonderful. She says, young lady, God said it, this thing He's going to perform it. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told to her. And Mary said, got your Bibles all loosened up? Good. Before we get into it, let me give you some Bible trivia. If you have never studied church history, now I know this is extra biblical, and I just said I didn't like extra biblical stuff Sunday. But church history is fascinating in the sense that, though it's not biblical, it stems from the Bible. 
Did you know that you can take almost all of the sermons from the early church fathers? You can take almost all of their sermons, which were written down and copied and recopied. And you can take out of them, you can extrapolate from out of them uh, almost the entirety of the Old Testament and most of the New Testament. Why? Because they preached the Word. They preached the Word. The first century, if you think the times are dark now, let me explain to you, this is what I'm going to try to explain in January to our young people. If you think the times are dark now, think about being a Christian in the first century. Titus has just marched into Jerusalem. He has ransacked it. The temple, which was just finished basically, has now been ransacked, burnt down, and destroyed. Cannibalism was rampant. Murder. They had killed as many as they could. And the Christians had begun to suffer severe persecution. You think getting laughed at on the internet is persecution? No, you're being mocked. You're not being persecuted, you're being mocked. Those are two different things. I know being mocked isn't any fun, but we don't know what persecution is yet. Thank God. No, I, I tell you, uh, these, when they heard of these things, thought surely Christ is imminent. And now 2,000 years later, we say, surely Christ is imminent. But what do we do? We must turn back to the light of the world. Go back to the Word. Never let go. Why? Because He's never going to let go. He's never going to stop. And when you hear things like I heard old Henry Rollins. You know, I, used to, I, I mentioned a punk band already tonight. When I was a kid, man, I was, I was big into music. Uh, and I, I used to like Henry Rollins. I thought he was a clever chap. Henry Rollins says, you Christians out there, your, your worldview and your belief system is collapsing at a rate unknown throughout history. What will you do when it's done? I just laughed. Do you know why? Because this punk rocker, somebody I used to think was clever, bought a couple albums. I laughed because <laughs> hammer after hammer after hammer has been worn out on the anvil of the Bible, and here it stands to this day. Yo, don't, don't bet against God. Don't bet against God. Mary is about ready to sing something, a spontaneous psalm worked up in her spirit. Uh, it becomes Scripture in the New Testament, but know this, it is interwoven with Scripture from the Old Testament. Why? Because the prophets are subject to the prophets. See? I don't bring anything new. I might have a clever story here or there. I might have some, some application I bring, but no new truth. No new truth. Mary says... And my spirit, excuse me, and Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Turn with me to Psalms 34, 34. My soul doth magnify the Lord. Psalm 34, 2. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. It's not a new song. Mary says, my, my soul doth magnify the Lord. She goes on in verse 47. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. Psalm 35, 9. Let's see. Psalm 35, 9. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. My soul doth magnify the Lord, my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Verse 48. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from hence all generations shall call me blessed. Now notice this. In verse 
47, it says, My spirit hath rejoiced in God who? My Savior. Only sinners need a, need a Savior, folks. Okay, so that's important. So she says, My soul has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded my what? My low estate. She had recognized she was in need of salvation. How did she find that out? The Word revealed it to her. The Word of God revealed it to her. And as she came to this blessed knowledge that she was carrying the Christ child, confirmed by her, her aunt, uh, confirmed by her aunt, encouraged in this that God was going to perform that which he said he would do, she began basically to preach, to prophesy, to speak forth the word of God by way of song and hymn. Yes, it says, all, she says, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done, a great, hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. Turn with me to Psalm 71. Psalm 71. I hope you, bring, you got any markers or pens with you? This might be good for you to write down. Psalm 71 and verse 19. Thy righteousness also, O God, is very high, who has what? Who has done great things. Who has done great things. Oh God, who is like unto thee? Remember now, we're talking about Mary, who most scholars believe is a teenager. A teenager. We're talking 14, 15, maybe 16 years old. And, and if, if you're thinking, don't, don't, you can't judge the culture of antiquity... Uh, with the values of modernity. You can't do that. Uh, most, again, like I said about Anna on Sunday, most people uh, didn't make it out of infancy. It wasn't that people didn't make it into their 80s, but the average lifespan was between 30 and 40 years old because many died young, and many women died giving birth. Why? No antibiotics, uh, nothing to sterilize anything, you know, we, no Lysol. No, uh, but this young woman must have been taught something from her youth. They didn't have Sunday school like we have now, but I praise God for our Sunday school. Miss Lana, we were talking tonight about our, our, uh, our literature and our education, um, uh, our, our literature, education literature. Miss Lana, I want to encourage you. It's the Old Testament that the New Testament sits upon. When my grandson comes home and he begins to tell me about Daniel in the lion's den, you have to know that those are the stories that I carry with me today. Yes, I know. The Old Testament is Jesus Christ concealed. The New Testament is Jesus Christ revealed. But we're in a lion's den sometimes. Sometimes we go up against giants. And you know what? Sometimes I carry five rocks. Why? Because I know Goliath has got brothers. How do I know that? Because of my Sunday school teachers. Because they taught me the stories of the Old Testament. Because they went through these things. And then when I got older and I began to study the Psalms and I read something like, Oh, God has done great things. Oh, how great and mighty that, uh, art thou, God. I go, yeah, he is great and mighty. He parted the Red Sea. He, he smote Egypt ten times. So you have the stories to back these things up. Uh, and here, this young lady, Mary, uh, having this Christ child in her, though never being with the man, now begins to bring to, into remembrance the things that God had put in her. You know something I learned from this pulpit? God will never get out of you what he doesn't put in. He'll never get out of you what he hasn't put in you. Sometimes uh, you, when you start to feel squeezed, it's because he knows that deep down inside of you, there's faith there. But it's been buried. It's been buried under a lifetime of hurt, pain, disillusionment, bitterness, fear. So he squeezes and squeezes in time, until finally boom, you burp it up and go, I have a spirit of power and of love, and of a sound mind, not of timidity. I'm going to go boldly before the throne, and I'm going to make my petition known with all thanksgiving. God, help me. I love you. You are good. I know this to be true. You have done great things. 
I got an email yesterday. Um, it will remain nameless. Three things that we need to pray for. I sent back one verse. When the priests step foot into the Jordan, the waters will part. You can't hide and expect God to do great things. You say you have faith and you have not works. I say you have a dead faith. I say I have faith and I will show you by my works. Step into the water. Then it will part. That was for free. No, this Mary, she had heard something. She had read something. And now she's saying something. Why? Because she's living it. She's living it. How awesome it is to dream out loud, but how great it is to live the dream. He is mighty, has done great thing, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 17, 7. Ooh, we're going to the, to the very beginning. Must be in the front row. Genesis 17, 17. God says, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant. How long is everlasting? Till next week? Till you, well, you know, at least until we get the vaccine. From everlasting to everlasting, from an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and unto thy seed after thee. This young lady knew the promises of God. She stood on the promises of God, and she was about ready to give birth to the promise of God. Yes, he says, she says, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation, and hath shown strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in, in the imaginations of their heart. Turn with me to Isaiah, the prophet. Isaiah chapter 40 in verse 10. Isaiah chapter 40. In verse 10, speaking of the arm of God, has God's arm somehow grown, grown short? Has God somehow uh, lost a step? The aristocrat of the prophet says, Behold, the Lord will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for, uh, rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. She knew her word. And he's at verse 51 back in Luke. He has showed strength with his arm and he has scattered the proud in the imaginations of their heart. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. And he hath filled the hungry with good things. Now, what good thing do you think he's filled them with? Turkish delight? Isn't that lying the witch in the wardrobes? Ooh, Turkish delights. No. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. He fills those who hunger and thirst for righteousness with good things. He has filled them with good things. And the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath helped or helping his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. Psalm 98.3. Turn with me to Psalm 98.3. These are all in your Bible, are they not? Have you ever read them before? I know George Ann has. George Ann's probably worn the words out. Psalm 98, 3. He, God, hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. You know, the, these psalms are about Israel, but we're, we're children of promise. Did you know that? Grafted into the fig tree. Now, I'm not saying I'm a Jew, but I'm a spiritual Jew. Why? Because I, I have a circumcised heart. And all the nations know about Christians. I don't care what you think about our, our current president. And yes, I know there's a president-elect. And I don't care what you think about him. But there was a 40-second blurb on my YouTube feed today. And do you know, for the very first time, 
ever in my 49 years I heard the president of these here United States say that Christians throughout the world for the last 2,000 years have been praising God for his only begotten son who came to take away the sins of the world, who died for us. I'm going to put it on our Facebook. I don't care what you think about him, and I don't care if you think that he's just doing it for show. Here's what I say. He said it. He said it. Amen. Well, he goes on here. God's done great things. And, and in Psalm 98, that his servant, uh, he, he remembered he helped his servant in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers, Abraham, and to his seed uh, forever. Again, that's Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. And again, Genesis 17, 7. But Mary abode with her for about three months, and returned to her own house. When Mary began to contemplate the Christ child, she sang a song. But she didn't sing just any song. She began to sing the words of God. Okay, coming down, Bill. Here we go. i got to brave these stairs. New hip is coming. Ten more pounds. Okay. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. So, he's coming back. What's on our lips all the time? What is it that we're constantly confessing? Now, I'm not the name and claim it crowd. You know that. You know that. I'm not one of these guys that if you speak it forth and manifest it into your life, no. That's, that's magical thinking. That's the secret. That's popra. I call, and you know why I call her Popra, because everybody kisses her ring. They, they do what she says. No, no, that's Oprah and her crowd. No, but there is something to be said about speaking God's word, because faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing. Bill had to remind me this. At the very beginning of the whole lockdown, Bill had to remind me of this. He says, Scott, you could go on the internet. You know I didn't want to do it. I still can't stand it. He says, doesn't faith come by hearing anyway? I said, yeah, I know, and we're recording it and putting it on there. They don't need to see me. But he did remind me of that. And I've said it since the beginning of my ministry here at Desert Hills as the pastor. You you need to speak God's promises into your life. Not so that they can magically manifest, but so that you can hear yourself confess it. When they came to Jesus, right? There's a guy that comes to Jesus. He says, we know you're good. I've kept the law my whole life. You know, what more do I need to do? I'm paraphrasing. What more do I need to do to inherit the kingdom? What more do I need to do to be saved, Jesus? He goes, I tell you what. I like the cut of your jib, kid. He goes, go give away everything that you have. The rich young ruler. The Bible says that the rich young ruler went away sad. And Jesus was grieved in his spirit. He says, but the thing I left out was he came to us and says, we know that you're good. Why do you call me good? The Bible says there's none good, no, not one. See, Jesus confessed the word immediately. Hold on a second, kid. Why are you calling me good? You know the Bible says there's none good, no, not one. He says, well, because of the things that you do. He goes, well, there's, no, there's none good, no one, not one. Only God is good. You know what Jesus was waiting for? He was waiting for that kid to go, well, you're God in the flesh, Jesus. He was waiting to hear that confession. Just like he's waiting to hear our confession. Now, we've, I confess, I told you Sunday, through tears, you know, I confessed him when I was eight. Now, I confessed a lot of other things since then, too. But when I started to confess that, you know, Lord... I know you want what's best for me. I know you're going to work all things for the good who love you, called according to purposes. I really do love you. I know you've called me. So you know what? This is what I want. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You know what happened? Peace started to come up in me like a river. Boy, that'll, that's like a song or something, right? Peace started to come up in like a river, and then all of a sudden, joy like a fountain, you know? And then all of a sudden, that starts spreading around. And then my wife kind of gets saved. 
and my kids kind of get saved. And, and then all of a sudden, you know what? I'm not saying it's not speed bumps or there's not a rapid every now and again that we got to hold on tight. But what I will tell you is this, is now when my children come to me, we have a Rolodex. Well, boy, I tell, well you, you guys know what a Rolodex is. I see some gray out there. The kids are like, a Rolodex? What's that? Well, if you're on the Internet, let me tell you what. Look it up. Google it. Now we have a, we have a reference. We have a reference. You say, here, I want you to turn with me here. You remember back here? You see here? I said, well, Dad, you don't even know. They're making fun of me. Well, what were they saying? Well, Dad, they said, I'm getting a ball spot just like you. I said, well, good. I said, why do you say that's good? I go, because they, they made fun of one of God's men, called them, hey, bald head, hey, bald head. God sent two mama bears, ate them all up. <laughs> and I said, that, that sounds mean. No, you know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like God protects his own and, and God takes seriously that which he has called men to do and women to do and he takes seriously the men and women that he's called. And then my son goes, oh, okay. And I go, and, and try to comb over it for a while. So, you know, that's what I do. Don't tell him I said that. Listen. Wednesday nights, you, you know, this family night is where all the fighting cells come from. See? This is family time. These, all of our teachers are here tonight. And if they're not in this room, they're down there or upstairs. We got to be built up. We got to stand on the promises. We have to know this was just a 14, 15 year old little girl, all of a sudden, pregnant, pregnant with the God of all creation. And she did not shrink from it. But instead, it says that she treasured these things in her heart and immediately began to confess the word of God and his promises to his people that she had read and been told and taught. You have all been read to. You have all been told. You have all been taught. We do not know that this is not our finest hour. Stand firm in the faith. They're watching. My grandchildren are watching. They want to know, and I want them to know, that their grandfather believed what he said. Their grandfather trusted the Lord. Even if he should kill me, my Redeemer lives. That's in your Bible. And that's what I believe. And that's what I stand on. They're watching. Our sons, our daughters, our brothers, our sisters, our uncles. The atheists, the believers, the backsliders, the religious. They're watching. Let your light so shine before men that your good works might go forth and glorify the Father. And as they do, I have every reason to believe you can expect blessings. Blessings, if not here, then treasures there. Oh, let me tell you, don't ever think it doesn't escape me. The one that says, I don't really care if I clean toilets in heaven. I, to me, that's a false humility. I clean toilets. The fact of the matter is, Mike, I'll be honest, I, don't, I like cleaning toilets. It's weird. When I was growing up, that's what we did. We cleaned houses, right, sis? And my job was to clean the bathrooms. Something very, very satisfying about clean porcelain. But the Bible mentions rewards for faithfulness. There's a reason why. I want every single one of them I can get because we get to lay them at his feet as an offering later on. And I pray to God that I have truckload after truckload after truckload, and I pray it for all of you too, not because I'm greedy, but because he's worthy. He's worthy.